there is no sign of the torrential <laughs> rain and near flooding that was on this track last night. Except that my so shoes are still soaked through. That's true. <laughs> Wet shoes, but there's no frogs left. Uh, we certainly haven't seen any more crabs. Um, it's like a different day. So the plan is we're going to hopefully grab a rice and curry from our new favourite bakehouse in town. And then we're going to stroll out of town via a couple of attractions. Hopefully hit the market. As you know, I'm a massive fan of markets. So hopefully this one will be good. And then head to some cave temples. We're developing a slight addiction to the Ben Sotar Bakehouse. Today it's rice and curry day. This is the vegetarian rice and curry. You get a giant plate of rice and check out all of these curries. There's a bean one, a vegetable one, there's some papadum chilies and there's the dal. It is fantastic. What do you think, Al? I'm really excited. This everything we've eaten here has been great. So <laughs> now we get five more things to try. <laughs> Alright Al, give us the meal report. Oh, it was really, really good. There was an onion thing with a vegetable we've not seen before that was really nice and the dal is excellent. So we're trying to leave some because that's what the locals do, but it's really hard. <laughs> One of the problems with self-guided tourism is when you get the wrong entrance to something three times. So, first we went up to the museum, wrong entrance. Then we went up to the Golden Buddha, wrong entrance. Then we walked to the top of the hill and I came back down the bottom to get the tickets only to find out that is the entrance. So now I've got to go back up to the top to get Kel so we can both come down to go to Cave Temple. So, yes, it's a bit more complicated. It's the sort of thing that wouldn't happen if you had a guide or even got a tuk-tuk. But of course, we're walking today because this is the only attraction that we're really planning to go to. We did go to the wholesale market. That was pretty amazing. So there's these three huge warehouse style buildings and all these trucks are squeezing in, trying to wholesale all their you know, pumpkins and onions and just everything. And uh, tourists are not necessarily unwelcome, but you've got to stay out of the way. So we did that for about 20 minutes, just taking heaps of photos. And most of it was pretty standard stuff you'd see anywhere, but just the atmosphere was crazy. Truck trucks trying to squeeze in and out, people selling food. So yeah, it's a pretty special spot and People on TripAdvisor are saying it's probably the biggest market in Sri Lanka. Bearing in mind that it's a wholesale market, which is a little bit different to say the markets we normally put in our videos. So I've power walked to the top of the hill while making this short video. We'll find Kel and we'll bring her back down. She's laughing, she knows, she knows what's happened. So down we go. <laughs> We are both having a little rest because the walk up here was quite steep and really hot. We keep picking in the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day, to walk up the hills. Yeah. Not our best choice. We're also carrying a couple of extra kilos after breakfast. <laughs> so what we're doing is we found a secluded spot at Cave Temple and Cal is Wikipediaing what we're looking at because we're too cheap to pay for a guide. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yeah, we are Wikipediaing it. We're currently at the cave temple in Dambulla and this is the largest cave temple complex in all of Sri Lanka. There's about 80 documented cave sites in the area. The main cave temple is spread over five caves. That's where we are right now. There are incredible mural art all over the ceilings, heaps of Buddha, 
it's really beautiful. You can take photos and video as well, which is pretty unusual. So it's 100, well, no, sorry, 1,500 rupees to get in. Uh, so it's not cheap, but it's not the most expensive attraction in Sri Lanka. But so far, we think it's worth it. Just the murals, the paintings on the wall, and the caves are pretty spectacular. It's also a great view, but just make sure you bring lots of water because it's quite a climb. This is Al doing a takeaway run in between rain showers and our guest house in Dambulla is right out in the countryside so there's certainly no street lighting. I've got the headlamp on. Jump! Jump! Alright, I was fortunate enough to get a lift almost all the way from the guest house of town on my takeaway run. I visited four or five different uh, restaurants. Most of them I thought were pretty overpriced considering how rough they looked. I didn't want to go back to the bakehouse for five meals in a row. So I popped into somewhere else, grabbed a couple of samosas and one big thing of fried rice. There you can see I've got the headlamp on, it's really dark. We're really excited about getting the candy and uh, seeing the lake and being right up in the mountains. Our final walk through the rural countryside of Dambulla, heading to town. We have finished our stay here and we're about to catch the bus to Candy. We've really enjoyed our time here. It's been the perfect base to see some of the ancient sites and there's been some great food and super friendly people. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sidria was awesome. The cave temple here in Dambulla was pretty good. Uh, certainly worth the visit if you're here for any more than one day. There's a couple of things we didn't do, but uh, we're pretty sure we nailed the most important activities and uh, the food has been really good, even though we only ate at the same place virtually every time <laughs> because it was so reliable, really affordable. Bubbles, 100 rupee a bar, aerated chocolate. I'm calling it an aero bar. <laughs> It's fun. There's no arrow, but it's a lot closer to chocolate than normal. 